Oh, ice. Oh, ice. Give me one of them gangsters. I know you got some gangster shit over there. These some Fort Worth nigga. They want this gangster shit. Yeah, we do. Uh oh. He's starting off real gangster right See? He been studying. Mm. A nigga that set up. Nigga that set up, you might like that one. <laughs> No, anything go my way. Mm -hmm. I know you can fuck with it. You can talk good shit on them. Hey, I said a nigga can't tell me shit because I ain't gonna listen. If he do try to talk smart, he might come up missing. Mm. Ain't nobody told him nothing. He don't know who I am. The craziest motherfucker around here and I ain't never gave a damn. Mm. That's about my daddy. And they're gonna tell you the same shit. And they don't even know these niggas that I came with. Mm -hmm. About seven deep, but it looked like 50. Cause all my niggas carrying big Simmons, hold up. We got some problems like them niggas overseas. They don't want to start problems with no motherfucking G's. Hold up. Bunch of old niggas pulling up in big trucks, taking off their shirt and grabbing pistols. Never gave a fuck. One more time for the 85 South Show. Yeah. For the fuck niggas who didn't know. This the coldest show that ain't on TV that need to be on TV so everybody can see me. I might put that shit on BET Plus and uh, Thursday night, it's a TVC must. I mean, it's must-see TV. <laughs> and you can't raise it, PP13. No, this is rated R for mature folks. For the pimps and the whore folk. Mm. Yeah, like a food stamp coming through, talking big shit, heavyweight champ. Mm. Yeah, that was just some light, you know, you, just no, to make you sure. Rap for real, though. just to make sure shit yeah, works. Yes, yeah, so yeah. So you can always tell when somebody who rap for real. <laughs> when they do the freestyle, they stay on topic. Uh, Come yeah. on, man. Yes, indeed. Twisted Black fucked that up. Yeah. That sound like Twisted Black right there. He can't really miss me, though. I go. Not at all. Yeah. See, you ain't know we was musically inclined over here. No, I didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of good shit going on. We about to start doing action movies, really? dramas. You got the space. Man, got a motherfucking soap opera that we're working on for black people. Like no, the fuck I ain't. Nigga bullshit. No, the fuck I ain't. We taking over TV, bro. You got a black soap opera? Man, we got a black soap opera. What the hell Yeah. Some shit that every nigga can relate to. What? At work. <laughs> I'll be doing it. At work. That shit gonna go. At work? Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, everybody. 12 different storylines going at one time, bro. Uh -huh. Come on. That's, That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Come on, man. That's all. Oh, we got this shit jumping. Like that. But you know what? I think it's about time I tell these people. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. Yeah. Absolutely. All around the world, just selling a whole bunch of tickets, bringing laughter and joy. <laughs> through times of sorrow and pain. Uh, yeah, we got a whole lot of shit going on, man. Big business tour, jumping out the gym. Jumping all out the gym. All, all, all gyms are being jumped out of. Mm. So since we on the tour, and we about to go to Fort Worth, yeah. it's only right that we bring some Fort Worth legends to, don't, don't do it in Fort Worth, you gotta bring them to the trap so they can come and talk their shit. So I reached out to the legendary, none other than my nigga, Mim, Twisted Black. Come on, come on. And, and if you don't know, I'm just gonna assume that you've never been a fool with it in your whole life. <laughs> and since I'm a comedian, I'm a fool with it. 
It makes sense. Twizzy Black, welcome to the 85 South Show. I appreciate show. you having me. Hey, man. Hell yeah. No, fuck that. Fuck home. Already. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. How you been? Good, man. Blessed. Man, big salute. Appreciate it. You got a hell of a story. What where, where do we even start? I mean, it's up to you, you know. Floor is open. Shit, this this your first time here. Take yeah. it all the way from take it from the top. Oh man, listen, first of all, thank you all for having me. No and, problem. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege. I appreciate you really seeing that I got a story, right? Because Absolutely. Me doing music, a lot of people just look at the music and, you know, they like it. But me being off the scene for quite some time, 17 years, in the federal penitentiary, which Hell. most people know. Uh, so to be able to come back and tell my story, it's a blessing. I appreciate it. Right. Yeah. Man, that shit had to be extra hard because it's like, it's hard enough to go to prison. But when you got a name <clears throat> outside of that shit, like, how did that... How did that make it more difficult, you being twisted black? Uh, you know, I always said, I told people in prison, I say, anybody can, can get locked up, do their time, and it's hard. But it all depends on how high you fell from. Like, mm -hmm. if you were just a regular degler doing your thing, you get locked up, you do your time, of course it's, it's hard. You, you leave your kids or whatever. But if you come from the mud like I did, and was almost there, achieved the American dream. It make my mountain a little higher, maybe. You know what I mean? Because it's a it's a higher fall, mm. you know, than a lot of people. So it was tough. Damn. What was your introduction to the music, though? What made you start making music? Weed. Absolutely. We did it. Yeah, we used to get high. Me and a couple of my partners, we ride around and uh, freestyle like you just did. Okay. Yeah, I ain't even really know I could could, could rap for real to a guy. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might fuck around and be a rapper. Get the right kind of weed. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> so yeah, that that's what did it for me, man. And then I I got shot down in '91 because I got shot in the face. So once I sat down for a bit, then I uh, I started taking the music kind of serious. Yeah. And you know, just laying some shit down and. And, you know, people liked it because I was talking my shit. Damn, man, that's that's some hell of a shit to say. You got shot in the face. Yeah. yeah I got shot in the face. He just, right he just couldn't finish. You know, it was, it was a mean start, but, you know, it was, it was sticking power wasn't there. So, you know, all glory to God, but, yeah, I got shot in the face. Damn, man, and you survived that shit. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, a little, little bit of a game changer, but not like when people be like, well, uh, a lot of people get shot and and it's either going to make you worse or it's going to make you, you know, get out the streets. Uh, I just took it and just kept pushing. Damn. Yeah. Man. What's so like... You done been through it all. You shot in the face, seven, yeah. damn near 20 years in prison. They gave you life, though, right? They gave me 90 years, 330-year sentences. Damn. So I had to fight to get the 330s ran concurrent, right? Then I had to fight. Once I got a solid 30, is is to knock off the 30. So I got the crack law, I got the all-drug minors, and then finally this last one, I got the first step back. But it took 17 years and two months for them to give me any, you know, Finally, say okay, you can go. Damn. Yeah. Ninety years. Ninety. Shit. And then uh, not only did I get ninety, I got ninety for dope I never sold. So yeah, that's. Now that's, explain that's, that to to the youngsters how that works. Okay. Conspiracy. Conspiracy is a bad bitch. So by the time I caught my case, right. I was already out the game. I had been out the game for 13 months. I was done with it. It was all music. I was fucking with Toon out here. We had deals on the table. You know what I mean? Uh, TVT was at on my line. Universal was on my line. Tony Draper was mentoring me. Okay. Um, Wild House. <clears throat> yeah, that's my that's my guy. Um, so a lot was happening. Mm. It, it's it's a hard subject, but I'm gonna let you lead it and I'll just answer your questions. Okay, first of all, to all the young niggas watching this, explain to them what a conspiracy is, like, conspiracy okay. law. 
Because like you said, Bullshit. once they charge you with it, they could really pretty much say you did any goddamn thing. See, that's the best thing. That's, the, that's why I, I, I defer to you, because conspiracy is really saying, we know you did something. You might didn't do it now, but we can pin it on you now. So if, if we know two or more, uh, two or more of y'all um, made a phone call and he got dope or whatever, they going they could throw Carlos in there. Michael Jordan could catch conspiracy. Right. You did because they didn't have anything on me, bro. Nothing. No dope. No, I caught a case years ago or none of that. Somebody said you sold dope and we believe it and we're gonna run you through the ringer. It's that simple. That simple. All they need is what's called a nexus. Anything in my case, they had somebody to send some money through Western Union that I never picked up, right? And that was their nexus to say, okay, well, they sent you the money. So my lawyer was like, well, he never picked it up. He don't know him. Yeah, yeah but, it, but, it, but they know him. That's the nexus. True story. <laughs> yeah. Do you hear this unbelievable <laughs> shit? <laughs> but, but the good, good thing is, is public knowledge, right? So a lot of people hear the number 90 years, 30 years, did 17 years, or whatever. And they're like, what? See, it's public now. You can go look. You can go see Twisted Black stood in the courtroom. Because they got Twisted Black on my indictment in the footnotes. I, I took my lick. I did my time. But I did it for dope I never saw. Man, that shit is crazy. Yeah. So whether you did the shit or not, could have been completely innocent. It still would have took the same amount of time to prove that shit. Well, they, ne they never proved it, right? I mean, I never proved that I didn't do it. I went to trial, so that was a testament to, you know, I'm not going to take it. They wanted to give me 10, then seven if I cooperate. And, and not to get off subject, but look at with, with the Young Thug stuff, with the Young Thug case right now. You know now you ain't going to get him on the murder. So I'm watching the news this morning. Well, they still can get him on the RICO. Why? Because you don't have to have no evidence. And y'all don't want to look like some shit saying what well, we missed. So yeah, we could we could make up a story and basically get him on the RICO. I think they fucked that case up. So they bad. did, bro. I think that he got charged for all the shit that everybody else did. And now that they see that he ain't do the shit, they got to find something. Yeah, but but see, that's the thing, though. If, if this system is what, you know, it's supposed to be, right? Once you know, hey, we made a mistake. We're human. We went. Hey, we we caused you some some grief, and we fucked up. You don't just find nothing on him just because you fucked up. You know that's what, what it's looking like. Yeah, that's, that's what they do. Damn, that's what they do. <laughs> but man, it was always like while you was away, it was always like black coming home, twisted black getting ready to come home. So it's like you had a good team behind you still fighting this shit. So. Right. What it, what eventually got you, how did you get give the 90 years back and, well, and go to the 30 and then get back to 30? Well, the, the, uh, the, the 90 years got ran concurrent, and I worked on that immediately. I, I bumped my lawyer like, hey, you know, you do this right now. So <laughs> he did that. Hey, judge, you know, can we get that ran CC, CC concurrent? So they ran the, the 90 CC. So when I walked out the courtroom, you know, by the time they did whatever they did, by the time I got to my cell, I had one solid 30 ball. Mm. You know, That's still like, a fucking lot. Fucking right. When you got to do 25 on it. And then you are, then you're at the pinnacle of your career. You right. know what I mean? Everything you worked hard for, everything you sacrificed for, your kid, you know, everything. But... That's what they do. Damn. Yeah. So, we got, so the, the video is online of you actually walking up out of there? I don't know what I, I don't even look. They, the, I don't know what, the, what videos they got. I know I've seen some stuff where, you know, where I had to come back on the pill because people didn't believe that I told the judge I wouldn't apologize and stuff like that. He told me to apologize, bro. He said, because my lawyer was saying, uh, hey, your Honor, we want to throw ourselves on the mercy, you know, basically wanted me to speak to throw myself on the mercy, you know, mm -hmm. at the mercy of the court, to get a lesser sentence uh, when I came back for the crack law. I said, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because I, I didn't do it, so I'm not going to apologize for it. So he, once he, he, what he did was, instead of just, you know, letting me speak, he, he took it upon himself to read my record. Attempted murder, attempted murder, a whole bunch of shit, right? Okay, yeah, I did some shit. 
Okay. Damn. <laughs> I, did, I did some shit, but that ain't what I'm here for. Right. That was what I was there for. So he took it upon himself to read my record in front of, in the courtroom in front of my family, in front of my children, right? And uh, then said, well, you came to my town and sold drugs, and I believe you did this, and, and basically now, so now what do you want to say? And I told the judge, I said, well, Your Honor, I don't, I don't want to throw myself at the mercy of the court. I accept my responsibility. I said, but all I ask of the court is don't let me have to do my time so far away from my son so I can help him navigate a little better than I did. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't get jazzy with him. I just told him, you know, I ain't finna apologize for that, you know, because I ain't do that shit. Can't apologize for some shit she ain't do. Yeah, I, I'm not going to. You know, some things, you know, you, you get to certain points in your life and you just, you just going to stand on it. Yeah. yeah. How do you guys say stand on business? <clears throat> some people do. I ain't saying that made me smart, you know. He wasn't going to give me no less time anyway. He just wanted me to apologize, bro. Right. So. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel, though, like, if, even though you've been away for that long-ass amount of time, you, like... People kept you alive through the music and, you know, the new generation came through and and, and shouted your name out and yeah. sampled your hooks and your lyrics and, you know what I'm saying? Not not in a disrespectful way, but just kind of yeah. to keep the legacy going, man. What were some of the biggest surprises that it, when it came to that side from the inside looking out? Uh, some of the biggest surprises was when I finally, you know, got in less of security and was able to... Uh, Possibly see a cell phone. Maybe I saw one. Maybe I didn't. Type shit. Yeah. To see that the youngsters had uh, a lot of them had made songs about me and had murals. And then Bun B was always reaching out. Then I, you know, word came. You know, where uh, Big Chief would always shout me out. Him little flip and and Tom Tom too. Tom. Oh, definitely. That's yeah. my baby. Tom. I mean, just a lot of them. Yeah. Man. Slim Thug. You know what I mean? So. That was big, you know, for me. To, I'm like, damn, you know, because sometimes you think they forgot, you know. You know, you don't sit around waiting for somebody to do something for you, but when they do it, you know, you still appreciate it. So that was good, especially when I got home. Yeah. Yeah, especially when I got home. Damn, man. Yeah. What was that first day home like? Um... And don't think I'm, don't, don't think I'm tripping. I was... Uh, I was nervous, you know, because you would think, man, you, you've you been locked up all that time. You, I ain't finna be nervous to go, but I was nervous because um, I felt like I didn't fit. I'm like, that. well, let me just say I, I, I wanted to fit, but I knew I had, I'm different now. I knew, you know, I should, this shit took, it, took, it did some damage, but I don't want nobody to see it. You know, so I'm, when I'm out, I'm trying to be cool and make the right moves and shit because I don't want them to see that I've been affected mentally, you know. Yeah. you know. But it does. There's no way to go away for that long and do that much time the way I did it anyway. I did in the shoe and transferring and, you know, pushing the line. I was active, you know what I mean? So it, it take a toll on me. So my first day was I was feeling great, but I was nervous. I got in the, it was my first time in the front seat of a car. I was scared to death. I was telling my wife, man, please slow down. And she was just doing the speed. You know, but it seemed like everything was coming fast. She's hitting the brakes, and I'm like, oh, god damn, well, you know, let me out of here. That's some see, that be some shit you'll never even think of be one of the major That's changes. Right. Like, yeah. The front seat of a car. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I had been in the front seat so long, you know. So, yeah, that was uh. It was it was surreal. It was a surreal moment. Shit, I bet the night before it was hot. like knowing you about to get up out that motherfucker after all that time, man. What was that shit? What was that feeling? Uh, no sleep. Yeah, no sleep, shot. All night, same position, no movement. <laughs> Period. You just sitting up, waiting for, hoping they don't make no mistake, and then they got to bag your paperwork another week and shit like that, you know. And they call your name like shit. You still feeling like me anyway because yeah. I had did so much shit. 
I don't want to say imprint, but I, I've done a lot of things, right? So I was like, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, so I didn't want them to be like, you know, because you hear these horror stories about they let you out the front gate. Oh, they pick you up. And they pick you right back up for another indictment. Mm. So I was more like, you know, okay, that's the front gate. I'm almost there. I'm almost there, even looking around. So I'm just like, damn. And once we got on the freeway, I was like, you know, shit. I'm in the front seat of a car. I, I'm scared to really look back. But, you know, I just wanted to make sure I got out clean. Yeah. Yeah, so glory to God for that. How long did it take you to hit the studio after getting out, getting settled, and getting with the family and all that? It wasn't that simple for me. And, and that's the reason why I couldn't just go straight up. Mm. Because my, my, my homecoming and, the, and my support system, they... Uh, Everything was laid out for me, right? But I couldn't go straight up because I had to monitor them, so I had to go to halfway house. Mm. So once I got my pass, about a week or two later, I went to the studio. Now, a lot of artists say, like, you know, when they have to go sit down and do time of any amount that they can't create. Like, how long did it take you to get back into Like, did you ever break your, get into the creative mode? Wait a minute, you say they say where they, where they were going? You know, like they say, well, I couldn't write while I was in that motherfucker. I couldn't think of shit. My mind was just on doing my time and getting the fuck out of there. You know what I'm saying? Like, were you able to create still? I mean, I did five albums from prison. Yeah. So creating like a motherfucker. So exactly. whoever, you know, I'm not, no slight to them, but shit, I wasn't worried about nothing but prison while I was in prison, you know, and I'm creating like, I'd be sitting on the top tier watching a fighter or watching them just do foolishness to play dominoes. Let me get my pad up and write some of this shit down right quick. You know what I mean? I constantly created and I constantly put out stuff through the phone. As long as I could get a dial tone low. <laughs> when I was in Beaumont, I'm on the wall phone. I had five wall phones, five different pack numbers. <laughs> they was finna send me to a whole nother, uh, like damn near refugee prison for rapping on the phone, champ. Bloody Beaumont. I wasn't gonna stop. As long as I could get a dial tone. They was fucked. Damn. Yeah, true story. But yeah, I could create, so I don't know why they couldn't. Uh, we got different appetites. You know, you either can or you can't. Yeah, it's cool. Some of them got to be on point. I you couldn't pay. Pay. No shit. But I was hurt like a bitch. I know. Man, fuck, I was hurt too. Fuck that. I, and what really made me have to create is because I got broke in that bitch. Mm. Once I got broke, I'm going to create some shit. Because, you know, all the way to, and, I, and that's where Wirehead came in. Wirehead kept egging me. That was my DJ, like, hey, man, do the stuff through the phone, do the stuff. I'm like, man, I ain't finna do that. It's, I'm just gonna be a shell of myself. The timing gonna be off. It's gonna sound all funny. Shit, about 09 came. Shit, my ass was touching. Like, okay, let me go and shoot this shit through the phone. They start sending, you know, they were shooting that money, that Western Union, okay. But, yeah, I've been creating ever since. Yeah. Yeah, there are five of them. Figured out how to make that shit work. I did. Now you said it took you a while to get back in the studio. What was what was it like getting back in there after all that time though? Like just live in person creating, not through the phone. Now that that was uh, another surreal moment, <clears throat> just to be back in the booth. Yeah. And even more so than being back in the booth was to hear myself. Hear the playback from from what I just recorded. When I heard the playback, that you know, I was emotional then. Like, damn, this this the difference between what I was doing there, yeah, and doing it live. And and the, now that I'm out, I was feeling it. You know what I'm saying? And there, you know, I'm doing it because I know how to do it, and and, and I'm good at it. I could do it, you know, in my sleep. But in the booth, when I walked in there, I walked in uh, Session Works, walked in like Mike Tyson with no sock. They was like, hey, put, get you, here's some jury. I don't want no motherfucking jury. I come to fight. Yeah. Yeah, I walk in that bitch with some shredded shorts. You know, them hat turned to the side, went on. Who the fuck got a phone from 1860s in here? <laughs> 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 Fred Flintstone phone. That bitch 
I'm just Run got a one hooker in it. <laughs> <laughs> that looks super good. <laughs> <laughs> he got a wood back in it. Motherfucker got a rotary phone ringing on his lap. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Spacely. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Motherfucker's calling him about his freedom paper. <laughs> All right, man, so you back in the studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back in that motherfucker, man. Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. But <laughs> well, we will talk about your phone if it ring wrong. Bro. I'm just sitting here kicking it, <laughs> chopping it up, man, catching up with none other than the legendary Twisted Black, man. Damn. Hell yeah. It just feels dope as hell to catch up with you after all this time, man. man. Knowing what you've been up to. And I'm just like, you know, I'm a creative person, so I keep asking you, like, like when did you find that stride or when did you get back and like, okay, nigga, now I'm back. No, that's I found question. that shit now. Yeah. Now you in that bitch. It ain't just the first song home. You, that day you went and did five of them hoes. Yeah. What did all day, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like, I want that day. What was, what was, when was that? You know what? That's, that's kind of like two questions, right? Because I immediately, as soon as my first day there, I'm, I'm four or five songs. Next day there, four or five songs. I cre I have, I'm doing that every day. Right. And and I'm rapping, and it sounds good, right? You know, that's that's just my talent, right? But I ain't find my stride for real until probably about a month ago. Word? Word. And I'll tell you why. Because I still, like, everything's still so different. I went back, truly acclimated to how everything go. You know, still was, so I'm rapping and it just kind of on instinct. You know what I mean? I talk some street shit because I'm a street nigga. Talk some jail shit because I was in jail. But I was more comfortable talking about jail, right? Because I've been there, you know, so long. So now that I've been out here and getting back acclimated to how things go, you know, having some money, blowing some money. You know what I'm saying? Put them Rolexes back on, you know, switching them out, you know, step inside. Look how I want to look. Dry jump in the Porsche, you know, jump in the bin. Yeah, okay, I'm feeling myself again. I think, you know. So I think once I started doing that, you know, feeling life again, figuring it out a little bit, I think that's when I kind of found my pocket. And I'm still finding it. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. You did say you did 17 years, bro. That's. That's damn near 20 ball, like you said. Right. As a street nigga, how much have you seen the streets change? From behind the wall to coming back out. And now you're like, these young niggas are Swiss cheese and everything. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I guess it's different for, for me because, like I used to tell my wife, and she used to say, hey, you know. Where we going? October 6th. What? Miami, M I A O. Oh, man. Yeah, yo. Know what's happening? At the James L. Knight Center. Know what's happening? October 6th. All the bad bitches pull up, go grill, pull out. You know what's happening on me, man. Get your ticket. <laughs> I just tried to say that like y'all said, but you're going to say it in, Hit the at the James L. Knight Center on October Miami. 6th. Miami, James L. Knight Center. Yeah, and bleep the cursing out. Just you know in case what's you got to like put this on a you know platform that is children friendly. But get your ticket. Get it sexy, yeah. When get you put it the bleep sexy, on there, put the bleep yeah. after the curse word. Leave <laughs> <laughs> the curse word, put the bleep in. <laughs> no cap. Get it sexy, y'all. Get it sexy, y'all. <laughs> and you know what time it is? What? I said it for DC. October, October 5th. 5th. Nigga. Duval, we yeah. back. Jacksonville. Come on, Bye, stop. Man. Gotta go to Jacksonville. You already know what it is. We coming through. Nigga. Duval. No, Old it's 10-5. Florida. Florida Listen, pulling. I need the front row. All the bad with the front. Pull out. Whole thing. Go grill it. 10-5. No, October. That's what the 10 for. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we having a twerk contest. Stop playing. Get the website. Get the tickets. No, pull 10 four on a 10 five. You nigga, did? Shut your lips on the goddamn ass. Hey, 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 nah. Nah, don't do that. Don't do that. Just get the tickets. Jacksonville, get your tickets. I, I don't want you to come out here and think, you know, they're going to automatically respect what you've done, you know. But she don't know nothing about streets, you know what I mean? She just know about life, because she out here. And I, and I was like, man, how they going to not? I did it all. You know, they're they going to respect it, you know what I mean? I know they is. You know, I ain't going to come out there and, and try to debo nobody or nothing like that, but I'm thinking they're going to respect it, and they do. 
But the difference for me was, is I see the Swiss cheeser, you know, the nigga with his pants hanging down, he, he told that eye and then find that bitch. I see him when he come back there. He different. See, I get, to, I get to see him in his essence, see. Ain't no pistols back here, chap. You feel me? I get to see you without your game. And and I'm not impressed. You know, you got some far few and in between that. They just built like you got some stomp down young niggas, right? They, you know, they was raised and they and it's in them. But most of them faking. Period. Cause you got the pistol and you got the gang. Your gun shoot like a movie gun. You ain't, and that, and as soon as you and fire that bitch up and you done hit 17 wrong people, now I get to see you. I get to see you when you go in that room where you ain't pulled to go. That's when you're talking to them people. And I get to see you when you come back here and you sitting in that cell and you don't want to come out. I get to see you when that, the other young nigga that me and my partner sent to you. Man, let me take a look at that shit. I get to see you when you say, man, I don't want to fight, bro. I ain't looking for no trouble. I get to see you all that, see. So it's hard for me to... Yeah, they different, and I and I respect them now. I ain't gonna get in their lane, cause they will push my shit back too, right? But uh, most of you niggas, I know you, chump. I uh, see you in your essence, but I see you naked, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I see you in your boo boo suit, man. So you know, uh, but you know, I, I respect the young men, man. I respect they. Have you wanted to talk to any of them? Yeah, absolutely, I do it all the time. Now, I just, I ain't really up on, now the super tough kids, the super gangster ones, they know more than what I know. We ain't got nothing to really rap about. We can respect each other's space. You know what I mean? I respect you, you respect me. I ain't gonna get in your lane. Whatever you do is what you do. But I ain't really got no game. Mm. Because you, cause you ain't gonna do nothing but trample on it. You ain't gonna take it and do nothing with it. So I save it for somebody that, that wanna hear about how not to go back to prison or, you know, just really wanna want do better. You know, I'm not judging nobody, Kyla, when I say that. I'm just, it's my fucking choice. Mm. You know, I don't want, I don't want to deal with no super smart 22-year-old. How many of them young niggas you seen come through there that ain't never going home? A lot of them. Um, and that's hard, bro. That's hard. I'm going to tell you the hardest part about that um, is when you see them. It's one thing for them to come through with a life sentence, right? Or they ain't never, or 45, bro. And they 25, right? But it's a whole nother sight when you see them realize it. But the, the moment that it really hit them, because it, it don't hit you immediately. Because mm. now you look, as soon as it, as soon as it happened, you're like, oh, I'm going to appeal that. My lawyer said we could do that. Well, you know, she had, once that come, and then they say that law passing, right? But when it hit them, when like, that shit get knocked down. When they, when they start batting that shit out the park in court and they realize that this is my life, now you're dealing with, that's what I'm saying, then you're just dealing with a kid. That's, you know, now you're just dealing with a, a young man, a kid that, that then lost his life. And that right there, that hit different, if that make any sense. It make all the sense to me. Yeah, yeah. That's why I asked <clears throat> you so somebody can hear it. Yeah, so yeah, then you're you <clears throat> dealing with them in their essence then. But, yeah. And you brought somebody with you today, man, that you want to introduce ah, girl, who you got over there. Listen, the, this is this is gonna measy, right? Gonna measy. But before you before you take over, let me just say that was just the beginning of the uh, introduction. This is gonna be somebody who I listen, I think I can wrap my ass off. I don't think it's too many people that could it, get a 16 and give me a 16. And I didn't show it. I didn't rap with Face, Bun, some of the best. This is the only artist I ever worked with that constantly, constantly, if he ain't on my heels, he shit can to me on the track. Mm. I mean, you know, he might slow down for me every now and then. Like, Uncle, I ain't gonna, oh, look. He, he, he like that. That's gonna be easy, bro. That's what's up. Out of doubt. Yeah. yeah. Hey man, that's a, that's a hell of an intro coming from who it's coming from. Yeah, that nigga be camping like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I can't listen to that nigga, man. That nigga camping. You, know, you gotta keep keep some young gunners around, man. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. Like I don't have a lot. Yeah, 
he, he, you know, because I'm selective, and, and he, he is. You know what I mean? I said, I'm, I, I bet, bet on him against anybody. Where you find him at, man? Um, I first heard his name in prison, bro. Where? Yeah, one of my partners, Gucci, was telling me about him. We were just talking about that earlier today. And then uh, I was on YouTube, and, and, and one of his videos popped up. So I tried to get at him through this guy named Levi, right? And then uh, Levi didn't get at him. So then a uh, dude I was dealing with doing a management, LD, and uh, we hooked up when you were shooting your Jim Jones. Him and Jim Jones got a song, so they were shooting a Jim Jones video in Dallas. That's where we linked up at. That's what's up. Yeah. Mm. What y'all been cooking up, man? Sad at a street. You been a sad at a before? You know, yeah, yeah. I just was out there. Okay. Yeah, you heard about the crack down there? I I ain't get into no street shit. I went to a few little <laughs> now, we got sad, I went to a few little <laughs> pool man. parties. And... We got some sad at crack going on in this on this EP, man. I'm just saying. You feel me? Straight drop. Okay. Muscle. Yeah. Muscle. Real for real. Muscle. Some of my, some of my best work. He turned me up. See. Yeah. You know, I'm laid, but you know, I'm, I'm old, I'm laid back. I don't really, you know, turn up too much. Just give me a pen and a paper and I and I surprise you. But he turned me up. Got you writing that shit on the iPhone now, huh? <laughs> yeah, man, got my pants tighter and everything. I got uh, skinny jeans. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, skinny shorts and shit. Yeah, yeah. He, but we, we got an EP coming out right now, man. Uh, just really trying to, you know, to really show our affiliation, how, how I rock with him. Let okay, me. I gotta ask you this. Please. Okay, so you was you was locked up, you was gone. Man, what's your favorite piece of technology that then came out since you've been out? The phone. You fuck with that phone. The iPhone. That's a bad motherfucker, ain't it? What else you need? That, that I didn't say motherfucker get rich off the goddamn okay. iPhone. Please. Okay, check this out. So when we first started getting them in prison, right? So I had an old throw by me I could have had. Yeah, it's hypothetical shit. Hypothetically, I would have had a flip phone, right? So my guy was like, hey, here's an iPhone, right? So he gave me the iPhone. It was like an iPhone 5. So I don't need the little bitty joint. Yeah. So I'm in the bathroom stall trying to cut it on. You know, I don't know how, but I've been known. All of a sudden, I must have hit the camera button. See, but we've been hearing all these rumors about the iPhone. You know, the iPhone, the police on it. And, you know, because we in jail, we don't know. So, man, I hit the camera button and it showed me. I almost dropped it in the toilet. I thought the police. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, these bitches are true. <laughs> oh, hey, I went back and got the flip phone. <laughs> he told me, no, nah, Black, this is crap, man. And then you can tell me, give me the flip phone back, nigga. You trying to treat me. <laughs> True story. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, the phone, man, the phone, man. That piece of technology is a bad booger. Damn, bro. So when you finally figure that motherfucker out and you get on YouTube and shit like that, bro, I know that shit was just blowing your mind. Still do. Word. Man, what? I'm a, I'm learning all the other stuff about the phone now. Like I could be talking to you about that gold lighter, and then all of a sudden. When I go to my come up. see, that's why I don't keep it with me all the time. See, something is in the, somebody in there. So I like it to play with it and do it and use it for what you know. Now I'm social media doing all that, but I believe they got people in the phone. I don't give a fuck. I'm just, <laughs> using them goddamn people. I wanted that gold lighter anyway. Let me go and buy this bitch. <laughs> oh, they go. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. Just like you said, you ain't even got to do shit. Nope. Might as well just live this mother. I live this motherfucker uh, on a hundred every day, all day. Doing right I'm thing. talking about I'm ball till I fall. You doing the right When thing. I get to the Lord, I'm like, look, I can explain some of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, because shit. Motherfuckers, the odds, like as a black man, the odds been against us for so goddamn long, man. I take advantage of this shit every day, man. From the moment I wake up 
It's just shit. motherfucking smiles and laughs and all the good, good shit that good the world got to should. offer, man. Yeah. Every day, yeah. I try to conquer that motherfucker. I want to eat the best food I can have. Mm. I want to see the best women, smoke the best weed, want to ride in the best cars. Right. Nigga, we're going to have new drawers on every day, <laughs> new underclothes, new shoes. Nigga, I wear new shoes every motherfucking day. Yeah. Hell yeah. I never wipe a shoe off again in my life. You ever been to prison? The 11? You ever been to jail? No. <laughs> Dude, did you hear me? He said, I'm celebrating every day. Yeah, I, I thought that's why, nigga. nigga. I thought okay. maybe he had a release no, that. I, I, that's that's what jail do. Yeah. You, don't, you don't bring up no little uh, in and out to a nigga who been in there 17 years. Every time I ever went to the jail, it was a misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was nothing serious. It was yeah. suspended license and shit like that. It was nothing. I was it's out of still enough to get your, get your, get your mind right. Man, it makes you, you motherfucking right. Cause yeah. I swear, you I ain't been back. Bitch about eight hours. I'm riding to the house. I'm like, nigga, when the fuck they put a Walmart over there? <laughs> ain't no <laughs> way. Walmart that got that that was that was Walmart that. wasn't there when I went in there. I know that. <laughs> Are you tripping? <laughs> nah, I can't do no time. Oh, that shit bothering. He ran over here. He ain't even throw the hand signal or nothing. <laughs> yeah, I ain't built for no shit like that. I'm a comedian. Right. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do that. You, you know. You're the best niggas in jail, though, nah, boy. Yeah. Nah, for real. What? I'm gonna tell you what's kind of blowing me right in, in real time is, like, I'm listening to your questions, and I'm trying, like, especially in the beginning, I was trying to, you know, kind of gauge, I guess, you know, what you may want to know, you know, what you may ask. But what's tripping me out in real time is how you continue to make the shit funny. <laughs> now you, that, and I'm only saying that because you say you're a comedian. So that really, that is that is a real talent because you just do it naturally and just like you ain't even trying. It's effortless. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a real talent. That's how I'm living though. Man. That's good. Yeah, that's where I took that shit and figured out how to harness the gift and just stayed over there. Already. And struggled all the way. I, I made the promise to God I'd just do comedy if that shit work out. And then he started making that shit work out. I, I won't do shit else. From zero to a hundred. Wow. All the way. Talking about That's in the whole shit. state that I ain't from. Everybody done left. Nowhere to go. And just roll that shit all the way up into this. Still rolling it. That's what she's doing. Yeah, Good man. Good shit. Good shit. Definitely. Yeah, good shit. It's been a grind. Yeah, but but it's paid off. Like I tell you, I, you took what you took what they gave you and you built off of it. Man, and then you look back at the shit and it's like, I'm so glad some shit didn't happen. Like shit that looked like it was gonna be the, be the shit. I'm so glad a lot of that shit didn't happen. Yeah. For me anyway. Right. It was a great opportunity for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what God had for you, you got it. Absolutely. You're doing it. Sometimes it still be like, you know what I'm saying? It That's be like life. that. That's, That's how life is. My, my shit make bigger waves than that right now. But uh, one of the good things about going through shit, yeah. like shit that I went through or shit that you may have went through, when I have regular ass problems, I be like, shit. I can fuck with these. Yeah. <laughs> I take this Beautiful shit all day. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I used to tell my brother, he over there, <clears throat> he'd be like, man, these motherfucking trucks, I got it, the tire done fell off, I got to get another truck. He got like 10, 12 trucks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fucked up. I got to, man, shit, I got to. I'm like, nigga, there's some beautiful problems to have. I'm sitting in this motherfucker ducking the pole. I can't I ain't even pole to be on the phone. You know what I'm saying? I'm on a cell phone, possibly. Could have been on a cell phone in prison. Yeah, so now that I'm out here, I don't let nothing pull me down. Man, it ain't shit out yeah. here. You can be worried. Nope. Though, for real. I don't care what it is. I don't let it pull me back. Yeah. Man, have you got to work with any of the um, the new, um, younger generation since you came out besides your artists? I mean, of course, y'all got some heat coming, but... Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people wanted them features, man. Oh, yeah. The features? The features, <laughs> features, features came. Uh, but... Yeah, I work with um, work with just I like out of Fort Worth. I work with just about all of them that's making some noise. Yeah, PB Murder Gang, Go Yayo, Hood Fame, Lil Ronnie, uh, Solo Luigi, uh, 
Shout out to Solo Illusion. Man. Yeah, that's so, a, that's a wild talented, nigga talented, right there. Talented yeah. guy, man. Talented <laughs> guy, man. Uh, and just about everybody, man. And, and that's one thing. I don't have no complaints. You know, they, they, nobody pulled up with no egos. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, everybody gonna think they the next one for the city or whatever. And that's cool because I don't mind you being. You gotta have that warrior spirit. Yeah, of course. But you gotta beat me on the track, though. You gotta be once we push play, because each one of them, Solo, all of them except PB, because he's so laid back. Solo, Yayo, um, damn, I can't think of the rest of them. They all told me, though, man, OG, I got to put you on your pockets. I got to you know, sit you down. I, I give you a shot at the title. And, you know, it, they, you know. Uh, you, you they OG. Who's some of your OG? In the music or street? Oh, <clears throat> start with the streets. Cause I feel like the street niggas don't never get enough credit anyway. Right. I couldn't agree with that. Uh, I, w I won't say, uh, let me just say, if I had to have OGs, it would probably be like uh, L.A. Ryan. Okay. Right? L.A. Ryan. See, his name need to be said on shit like this so and keep the legacy. Yeah, man. but see, he got a show. He got, he came home. He was he was gone thirty four years. He just got he ain't been home a year. Damn. He jumped right on YouTube, telling his story, and got hundreds of thousands of followers. I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, man. OG Ryan, uh, LA Ryan, OG LA Ryan, and people like uh, Big Funky. You know what I mean? Um, who, one of the people who created the Texas family, you know, things like that. People that I look up to the, I ain't gonna say look up to, but I had a lot of respect, just on street shit. Billy Ray Maddox, Boot Nose, uh, Bobby Reed, you know, uh, what's the old man out of Dallas? Mr. Ray, you know, HR, Ray Char, you know. These are all people that, you know, they did their time, you know, where they got their money, they did their time. and. I, I watched them do it. They kind of mold me a little bit, just mm -hmm. through watching through it, you know, seeing it from afar. Now, on the music side? On the music side, um, I would have to say probably, and, and I call them, OG, I'm only calling them OGs, not on their age, but just because they've been doing it so long, like a Bun B or a Scarface and DJ Toon out here, you know, from the producer side, like I, those are the people that could, could call me and say, hey, you need to do this. And I, I wouldn't second guess it. I would just do it. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. Now, I got to ask you about one of my uh, favorite <clears throat> Twisted Black tracks of all time, bro. I told you the first time I talked to you that they are damn secrets. Yeah. It's just a whole nother level, bro. It's like, that shit. The, the storytelling and the, the, the beat pattern and, right. man, how, how did you put that whole concept together? Oh. Um. What was you at? Like, what was going on in your life right then? What? Give us the moment. Well, what, what, was what, you eating pie pies and shit? What was going? <laughs> what was that? What was you at? It, I don't know where I was at in that moment in time. I just tell you what I was trying to put together. It was more like a story dialogue, something to, you know, to make you get not just listen, but make you guess. Mm. Because you know, at the beginning, I said, "Hey, listen now, you have to guess which one is the truth or whatever, or whatnot." So that uh. That one came from other people's stories, and then I just slid mine into it. It just kind of made you work a little bit, you know? Yeah. Fuck with your psyche. Yeah. Which one you think was the secret? I don't know. Okay. I don't I don't know. See? <laughs> it did what it was supposed to do. I don't know. That's it. That motherfucker just is on another level, bro. But did you, did you ever think that, like, would you say, let me say that, would you say that, I'm a fool with it is your signature track. Oh, I have or is the one that people associate. Yeah. Now, what's the story behind that one? Toon, DJ Toon. Yeah. Me coming to Atlanta, thinking I could rap. I was the hardest rapper ever, known to man. And I got in the booth with Toon, and I, he said, OK, rap me something. And so I went in there, I shot like a 16. And he was like, OK, that's cool. Uh, do something else. So I'm like, that's cool. He said, yeah, run me something a little harder. I'm like, this, this nigga tripping a little harder. <laughs> so I shoot him another one. Now I'm stomping on yeah, yeah, whoop, whoop, whoop. I shoot him. She said, he hit the button. He said, OK. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Come out. So now I'm fucked up. I'm like, this nigga don't think I'm dope. 
Man, what's wrong with this square ass nigga, man? Nigga, I'm hard in the bitch. You hear me talking about this bricks and shit? I got him at home, nigga, you know? So anyway, I come out. I come out of the booth and Toomp sat me down. He said, he say, hey, you can rap your ass off. And I believe you. He say, but you sound like you mad. He say, follow. He say, just make, make it melodic and make me follow it. You know, and with a melody, and that's when I came up. I I, I got a place out here because he said if I was serious, if if I showed him I was serious, he would work with me. So I say, so if I show you I'm serious, you'll work with me. He's like yeah. So I called him the next day. Said I got a place up the street. He's like okay, you serious? So I went to the place. I sat there Indian style, drinking some perp, smoking some perp, Indian style with a with a flat screen TV laid up against. We say you want the details, right? Flat screen TV laid up against the wall. Absolutely. Playing it through the PlayStation. Real nigga shit. Yeah, with the desk. Okay, I wasn't going to leave until I came out of there with that one. And I started thinking about my partners back at the crib. Rio, T-Cag, Lil Lee. They're pulling up with the big wheels and the doors going up. And, you know, I was a little bit more laid back, you know what I mean? But So I took they swag and put it in the hook and put my verses through the... Put my life through the verses. And I'ma tilt my cup, I'ma blow my trees, I'ma ride 20 something something under my caprice, I'ma fool with it. You know, now, and then when Toomp heard that, he said, now that's a hit. Yeah. And that was my signature song. Man, still to this day, that's, yeah. that's, that's one of them ones you gonna hear. Yeah, that was, that was my shit. You know, I fuck with the cars heavy, man. So it's like some of those shits, it's just some songs, once they make it to the car world, they just gonna live forever, bro. Yeah. We uh we just we saw your cars. Few of them. Yeah. Damn. Few of them. That was some light. Damn. That, that was light. light. Work. That was light. That's, That's light, light right yeah, Okay. That's light. Okay. If you name that motherfucker, I could put my hands on it. Okay. Yeah, cause you had, you had some some salad. It was a green bitch in the house. I'll call it. Nah, that the the black joint. With the suicide. Coming in. <laughs> oh, the the Lincoln. Man, yeah, that motherfucker oh. super hard. Yeah, man. Yeah, but yeah, that one, that song did make it to the car world. It did. So, yeah. Like you right. said, when you when your niggas when they pulling them out, bro, you you out in Dallas or anywhere in Texas, man, you gonna hear that motherfucker somewhere. Thanks. Yeah. So what you looking to do next, man? I heard you jumping into the movie world too. Yeah. Um, I, oh look, I gotta give you much props when you say that. We got infrastructure over here to try to make us something happen. So we That's definitely gonna want to rap about getting a yeah, collab sure. or something. Yeah, man. man. Yeah. Putting something together. What, yeah. what made you jump into the movies? Because I'm ugly. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the main thing. I got this scar on my face. Hey, you ain't got to put no makeup on me. I come right in to be a bad guy type shit. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah, nah. But, but um, honestly, that was always my end game. Mm. Even with the, I love music, but I always wanted to see my uh, my my vision on the silver screen. You so. telling your story? Uh, yeah, eventually, eventually. Now you just got your street stories. and Yeah, well, we start right now. I'm, I'm in a movie on the 17th uh, of this month, and I'm just playing myself. Okay. And my movie itself is called Bought Sense, right? And that's, that's my story. Mm. So, <clears throat> it, you know, I'm taking steps, so I don't just jump out there like, hey, I'm doing a movie, I'm, you know, bad man, they're not really alone, I'm doing so. No, nah, this is some long-term shit. Yeah, yeah, cause this, this, this would be the, this would be the one, you know, this, you know, it should set me, you know, so. So yeah, you got any bad guy role, or, or priest, I could play a good priest, you know, I just. Let me see that video right now. The best priest shit right now. Out of control. <laughs> to be Catholic. <laughs> hey, right off the muscle. No, you doesn't. Playing a bad guy be too easy for you, man. I'm glad you play a great father, a straight square. Yeah, I do Driving that. a minivan. I can do it. I'm having you. Now, you being a good guy, yeah, man. Yeah, but if you're you gonna, but if you gonna make me be that, you gotta you gotta keep the camera on this side no. the whole time. Hell no. Oh, Cause they don't wanna know what happened on this side. We gonna tell them because you some shit that it was defending the neighborhood. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Good. we'll come up that's with all that. that. We got that. That was good. Yeah, that was good. That's a good one. We good. fuck around and write a whole story, man. That nigga was working at the factory, man. Some shit blew up. We'll come, <laughs> yeah. up. We'll come yeah. up with any goddamn thing, man. 
Yeah, okay, I'm with it. Yeah. Yeah. Malpractice suit. Yeah, cash me. See? Man, yeah. we got, I'll put you in 12 fucking movies. Man, please. <laughs> please do. How the hell you play one of these roles where you just sit there and it's the voice, man? You don't want to be on the camera. Yeah, that'll you work just, too. Just be showing the back of the chair. You don't even spin around to the end. Twisty Blackness! Push you the whole fucking time! Look at that. <laughs> That's the comedian. Nigga, if I would have known it was you, I would have made it easy. Man, Black, that's fucked up, man. I done, I done blew up half the goddamn city trying to save <laughs> that motherfucking Spider-Man and you pushing uh, the button. Yeah, they need to start doing shit like that. Man. Yeah, hey. But we're going to do it. Yeah. Don't even worry about it, man. Where can we find some some new Twisted Black? Uh, I know you just said y'all got a project on the way. Where the project at? Yeah, it's on the way. We, we cooking now. We just shot a couple videos. We shot one with your mans and... Uh, uh, I'm gonna shoot one when you get back when y'all come do your show down there. Most definitely, right. you know we headed that way. Yeah, I know. So I'm, I'm I want to be there. So I, I want a ticket. Um, you I, don't need a ticket. I want to pay. Your name is I on wanna, the list, man. Already. I want to pay. Just give me the money. Yeah, I, I, let, me <laughs> get, let me give you the money. Just yeah, give me I want to pay because yeah. I get too many motherfuckers just asking me to be on the list. Your name on the list already. Okay, what well, I put your name on the list last year. Okay, well then you. Hey, I'm gonna pull up and say my name. Absolutely. Man. And then I'm gonna pay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, we work, me and him working, man, on, uh, you know, getting this product. Really, the thing is, I'm trying to transition, Kylo. You know, like, music is my thing. I'm trying to transition to something else. So I'm, I'm kind of. Add the media to the package. The media is where it's at. Well, you know, I got a podcast we started next week called The Shoe. I didn't want to say that on your show. You can say that. Oh, I didn't know. I I promote podcasts. I okay. feel like black people are a hundred years behind in communication. It used to be illegal for us to talk to each other. We got so many things that we need to hear and say to each other. Everybody need a podcast. That's Shit, true. We need one with the, uh, the the niggas at the barbershop need one. The hairstylists need one. We need the black scientists. The black people that cook shit, we need the comedians, the entertainers, the people who do uh, production. Uh, everybody need a fucking podcast. Because yeah, it's really it. just free information. Yeah, that's true. This is some some shit that you can listen to while you're at work. Truck drivers listen to it, people who work in the warehouse. It's like, some people don't listen to music all the time. You know how you want to just switch it up and you might want to hear some, some back and forth, some opinionated shit. Some in-depth interviews with niggas like Twisted Black who don't do a whole lot of interviews and shit like that. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like people, people fuck with that. Yeah, man. That's why we've been able to find success, especially during the pandemic, when motherfuckers ain't have nothing to do. That's when podcast shit really blew up. Blew up. Just like when you say podcast on on the black side, and all, everybody just think about motherfuckers arguing about who gonna pay the rent. It's a whole lot of information out there. Hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well said. And I'm one of them niggas who, I love information. I feel like you can never know enough. I be wanting to know some shit that I probably don't even need to know. Right. I be keeping up with what white people doing. Right. All well, that shit. Yeah, about her. Yeah, I'm dumb. All, they keep whatever it, they, they keeping do, up with what you doing. Whatever they do, I do. When they get yeah. mad, I'm mad. Yeah. Overdose. When they go buy some guns, I buy some COVID. guns. Yeah. yeah. When they go on TV and say, they're trying to take our jobs, I be right there with them. They trying to take mine, too. I just go with the flow. That's the only way you'll really be able to enjoy America, bro. Everything I see white people doing on TikTok, Instagram, if they buy a Chevy truck, I'm going to give me one. <laughs> they ain't going to... Yeah, it's no, You got to stop that. No, stop whatever that they shit. doing, I'm doing it. Stop that shit, It's man. where we live in. We at they shit. Who shit? Nigga, this your shit. No, it ain't. It used to be. It still is. It is, but it ain't. You ain't you owning the shit. You can't be it's like free. a nigga saying, huh, nigga, this shit. No, nigga, you think I'm owning my shit. As soon as I stopped even buying land, I bought me some. Nigga, all you gotta do is first. Uh, huh? Why you ain't just go first and do the shit, Carlo? Nigga. Nigga. Do you know, how dirty, like you know how it's dirty they like playing you. the game? What? They playing the game wrong. How? You scared. Just say that. It ain't nothing to be scared of. What was it? All right, I started studying America, right? There we go. I did. There we go with that bullshit. They don't give a fuck who used to or, or, or what was about to happen. It's all about right now. Right. When this motherfucker turned into one of the richest nations in the world, everything changed. It changed everything. We, none of this shit is what you think it is. 
He just went to the federal prison. And he'll tell you, it's, some, it's a whole nother world of this shit that we don't know nothing about. Until we, What's that now? And I'm just saying, until you get on the other side, it's some other shit. And then once you start figuring out, like, damn, they, but they said, well, I thought it was, it ain't never what the fuck it, which, what it looked like. But why they gotta go first, though? Why you ain't just Somebody go Somebody gotta be first. Why you let them niggas go first? Why you ain't go? I did a lot of shit first, but it wasn't. You said you it waited wasn't corporate. They did the shit. Oh, okay. That's the only thing that matters in here. Corporations. Yeah, mm. heard about that. If you're not part of a corporation or organization or union, and it break all the way down to even street level shit, you gotta be part of something. You'll never make it in this America, in this capitalistic society, by yourself. Unless you got something for sale. And even when you got something for sale, you can't just sell it by your motherfucking self. You have to be part of a corporate structure or you'll never be rich. So what you tell the young niggas who don't even have structure nowadays? Nigga, so they put just like you were saying. Age, they, have, they have structure, but it's for the wrong shit. Mm. You feel me? If money wasn't a goal, if it's not to make money and pay some taxes in America, you are in the way. Mm -hmm. All they give a fuck about is who gonna do that. Whether you black, white, nigga, Rican, port, whatever you are. Yeah. If you not fucking making money, you costing money. Yeah, I agree with that. Classism yeah. is the new racism. Explain classism. Classism, that's when these motherfuckers don't like you because of what you don't have. You're not a part of the elite system. You don't you don't pay taxes. You don't believe the shit that we believe. You think that they like this motherfucker because of the things that he does and says, but they don't know that this motherfucker really be in there looking out for them to make sure they stay rich. Mm. You get what I'm saying, Joe? No. You ain't a part of the people who make 30, 60 million dollars a year. It's levels to even being rich. Well, my age group don't know that shit. Yeah. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? True. So, what a nigga supposed to do? You say, I mean, yeah, it's structure in, you know, other ways. You feel me? Yeah, we do, but nigga supposed to know that. Niggas beat the that. game and give it back. Niggas will figure out a way to make this money and give it back. Mm. They give it back. Anytime a nigga gets some money, the white people will never have to worry about it. He finna buy everything. He not gonna take that money. And make some more money with it. He finna spend it every time. Not my brother over there. But he that see he <laughs> even he, he got that game a long time. It's a lot of motherfuckers who got that game. But I'm saying motherfuckers who get it in the in the entertainment world, in the music game, in the in the in the movie business. True. A lot of niggas want to look like money. Where it's coming from? But we we balling too fast. Right, right. Who giving us the game though? Nobody. That's what I'm saying. We so far behind. And communication and information. That's true. And we don't respect motherfuckers who don't have the shit that we like. If we can't see it. Yeah, you know, sure. fucker can literally tell you how to how to beat the game every time. And get have, give you the back. best information. Hey man, you need to do this, this, and this. Man, I don't wanna hear that shit. That nigga ain't got nothing I want. I don't like his car. His, his wife ugly. You, 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 there's so many ways that niggas uh, discount the shit that you say. Mm. Tell me about it. True. Well said. It's not of anybody's fault, though. I think, like, as more time go on and the more we communicate with each other and, and start to realize and wake up to the problems, of, you know, of the system, it's not necessarily about us at this point, but we do have to start building networks of people who understand. You know what I'm saying? It can't just be... Rah rah, like motherfuckers gonna actually have to put foot to ass, action and motion and money. It can't. It's not gonna be for free. Mm. And that's what's gonna separate a lot of people and get a lot of people left behind. <laughs> you just gotta be able to put something with some to get some. Mm -hmm. But don't get me preaching that shit. Too late. I'm saying though. I'm saying though. If you think we're gonna catch on though? You think? Man, you think my age? No, I'm bro. saying my age. It's too many distractions. You think we're gonna catch on? The younger generation. That's the you know, that's the thing about it though is, if your generation understood the power that they had, mm. or even mine, but even I feel like even y'all generation is slightly more advanced than ours because y'all 
Y'all were birthed in, in, into the smartphone generation. Y'all didn't have to wait on it. <laughs> the technology was already here. You get what I'm saying? Hmm. So I feel like the next two generations will be the generations that really change shit. Damn, I can see that. That's why we don't need no more 80 year old white people running the country. <laughs> Man, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, we don't need no old ass people doing nothing but saying, hey, and buy at Walmart. Put, <laughs> put the sticker on the bag, check the receipt. Really that's, and you don't need to be driving after 8.30, 9 o'clock. Oh, shit. Put the old folks up, man. Right. Should nobody should motherfucker really shouldn't have to be working when you 60, 70 years old. Sit your ass down somewhere. Yeah, ideally. Yeah. Ideally. Yeah. Put the old folks up, bro. Shake on that. The president should be a job. It's, it should be a job just like everybody else, man. That shouldn't take all that. Right. Uh, where you need all these motherfuckers. And, uh, no, it's that's it's, they done complicated shit, bro. If you really wanted to be the president. You should make seventy-five thousand dollars a year. Stop. Make it a job for real. Oh, man. man, that should be a job like a motherfucking. Don't they get like a Legion football they coach? Don't get money. They don't get nothing. They, they don't get like a hundred bands, something like that. Two hundred, two fifty, something like that. Yeah, it ain't. But if you make so much money being the president, who gives a fuck? Yeah. You make a lot of paper. You go speak and sell books and shit. Get all kind of money. Yeah. Be straight after that. Yeah. Plus, you can manipulate the stock market whenever you want to. Steal Man. some money. <laughs> steal some military budget money. It's all kind of little loopholes and shit. You can steal money. That's why they mad at dude. Nah, he, they mad at dude because he used everything that was in place. Yeah, that, he he know how to work the system. Yeah, That's why he, dude be getting no water. He said it. Yeah. You know, hey, I'm just using what you gave me. Exactly. I think everything he did was set up. You do? Absolutely. The shot. All the way down to even grabbing the pussies. Wow. He knew to say that. Wow. I think I, everything. I, I, he I did disagree. I think he was just the average uh, narcissist, right? And and he was that guy because he was talking shit like he brought it back to this is our shit. Or what if he just really is still an actor and he's making the greatest movie on earth? Then, then, then if you if you you have to salute, you have to blow your flute and salute him. But I'm saying like the movie that he making ain't ain't coming out for the next forty or fifty years though. If he, is he gonna be here to see it? He won't. We won't. Oh. That's what I'm. That's the whole point of it. Just so people be like, I can't believe they let this motherfucker do this shit. Yeah. It's real. Nah, it really is a motherfucker. And that's what I'm saying. They'll put that shit in the vault and it'll come out in 2075. <laughs> but but he is. What he is? He making a movie, a real one. Yeah. And, I, and if you think about it, man, racism always existed in the country. But when he got in office, it was different. You know, people, you know, it, it was just on their sleeve. You yeah. know what I mean? So he, he made motherfuckers feel entitled. They was already feeling it, but they, they started. He was their guy. Yeah, racism fucked up. But I feel like it's it's some even levels to that. I feel like racism is just like the bottom level. That's just like the shit they do in the daytime. Like, get out of here, nigga. Like, all that <laughs> shit. Like, that, that Southern... Country redneck, like, cause if it was really like that, they wouldn't let the poor white people participate in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how bottom of the tier it is. So that's just like daytime, nine to the sun go down. Right. The shit that happened when the sun go down. Now that's the diabolical shit. That's when they get to making laws and and chain gangs and SWAT Tough. units and and all that terrible shit. Tough. That's the that's the real tough, shit. bro. Tough, cause they got all that equipment, and you know who the fuck that equipment for? They got tanks and helicopters and dogs and grenades and tasers and all that shit for some citizens. No, that's that's for one specific group of motherfuckers. Huh. You that, know that? That's who they use it on. That's who they use it on. What's the threat? You know what the threat is? The color. They don't what they what they think we want this motherfucker. Man, like, we don't want this shit. Man, they just want you to, they want you to keep not wanting it. 
Yeah, well, yeah they trying to they trying to keep they trying to keep, 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 trying to keep you from keep not the way they think we do, nigga. We, I, we I, just I, trying I, to survive, man. man. That's We're trying to enjoy life. No, see, man. that's what I'm saying. We got to get out of survival mode, and we got to get to the point where we can live. actually live. Yeah, you right. Fuck surviving. Well, but you got that's to, the shit that be man. killing us early. Yeah, surviving. but guess what though? If they got all that equipment, and it's for you. Yeah, and you can't really too much think about living before you think about surviving. See? You got to survive the equipment in order to live. You see what I'm you see how that's the motherfucking Man, conundrum but, right there? It's just oh, that's the cycle. You know, you're trying to live, but niggas survival come first. Y'all gotta tell that shit to the young niggas, man. Say what? Y'all gotta help the young niggas understand that shit. Right. Yeah. You get you putting it out there. That's what matters. It can't, you know, internet cool. They gotta be face to face with this hey, shit. Hey, bro, what if all the young niggas, right? Like all the anger that young niggas got towards each other, right? What if they was all mad at the same shit that wasn't each other? That'd be powerful. That still ain't enough. That ain't enough. I'm gonna tell you why that's not. Bro, we ain't never had this many black people ready to die before. But ready to die. These young niggas ready to crash out and kill something. Not, man, listen. They don't be knowing yeah, they. Listen, listen, nah, yeah. man. I but disagree. What? Yeah, fuck me up with that one. Yeah, I disagree with that. See, a lot, a lot of people don't respect nothing but the fire. See, a lot, of, a lot of times they jump out there and do things, and don't realize they' about to die until they die. Now you can sit here and say common sense tell you if you did that you're gonna die, but they ain't thinking about it like that because everything is a movie or a video or a rap song. They think they can get away with that. Yeah, man. Yeah, until you die. Until the, the hot shit hit you. I, you don't think they see it coming? Fuck no, man. man they make brave. I'm telling you, I seen them in their essence, man. They not, you, it take a brave motherfucker to say, man, listen, I'm ready to die. And mean it. Stand on it. Run it, nigga. I ain't seen that one yet, champ. Now, I tell you, I named one. I was in prison. And I'm not saying that I'm with him. I'm just saying that I had to say, oh, that's a different type of young man. The dude that was in Dallas, I think his name was Micah Johnson. I tried to remember it, right? When they had to stand off in Dallas and they had to send a robot in to kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was ready to die, champ. But he said, I'm gonna kill a whole bunch of y'all with me. And I know you gonna kill me. Now, I ain't seen that out here in these streets. I, far few and in between, you know, you, you can get pushed to that. You nigga push your line, then yeah, you ready to die, you standing on it, whatever. But they ain't just pulling up talking about I'm ready to die in droves, man. Man, they faking. Don't go for that one. Okay, I can I can tell, I can see that point. Okay. But I'm saying, if this shit, if this, if 2024 looked like 1960, I know what a nonviolent protest, a march, all the young niggas got behind it. It's something happened that just sparked a revolution in the black community. It's powerful. I don't think it's ever been like it is now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Motherfuckers might not Agreed. be ready to die, but we ain't never had this many niggas that would even at least crash out. Uh, yeah. It, like that. Yeah. Yeah. True. Pop on them, then take them fucking pistols down now. True. We ain't had no black leader in a long time. You get what I'm saying? Either, you feel me? Yeah. Martin Luther King, the Malcolm X's, and shit like that. Man, we see. But see, that's, that's what I'm saying. That, that's the system that's in place. There's a reason for that. Of course. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. just saying, you know, you know what they say. Motherfuckers who was teaching living instead of surviving. You know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I can agree with that. Yeah, people will, you know, stand on it now like they like they wouldn't then. Right. You know, well, not, they were standing on it. Absolutely. But I mean, not they, to discredit they, nothing yeah, they did. Yeah. But the approach that yeah. they took would have been a complete, like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look like that. But man, I'm gonna confess something to you, man. man. I get sick of trying to ride for what's our cause, right? Right. Or I can't do too much anyway. I can't. As soon as I start making my sign, I'm going to jail. So I can't. Damn sure can't carry it up the street. Right. So, but I, if we, if, what's the point in riding when when they do? I ain't, and I'm not saying I'm against it, but you know, it's you get kind of stupid when. You'll turn right back around as soon as the shit over with. You looking at me sideways, cause like you said, you don't like my car or my wife. We 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 back mad at each other. Anything, anything to discredit a nigga. Man, anything. 
Man, that, so man, but I think just, that. that's that's a whole nother. I got another theory behind that too, though. I think that's that's the mo- that's the shit that's in place to throw us off. What if them niggas ain't who we think they are? Ah, shit, you believe in the weather machine? No, nah, I believe it. I believe that some niggas is. is you watch that movie. On the other side is all I'll say. Yeah, well, it is. Ages of provoca- uh, provocateurs. Yeah, it is some niggas on the other side. Uh, or, or even to make it a conspiracy. What if they ain't even niggas? Who Come on, man. We ain't going that far, Carlos. What Come if on. they ain't? No. What if, though? No. See how they got us? No. We can't even. They we just on the other side. We just don't say that. Nah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> but guess what? <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Yeah. I don't know niggas. Shit. Man, them niggas black, they were just on the other side. They know what the fuck they did wrong. That was just on the, you know. That sound like a white man to me. (laughs) See, Trevor. Sound like a white man. That sound like a nigga need some money. That's what it was. Martin Luther King needs some motherfucking money on. You feel me? That black ass needed some money. Him and Coretta needed that money on. They fuck with the folks, man. Come on, man. That's what it is. Yeah. Sam- but see, when you say them folks, I don't even think it's like them folks has been like people, though. I don't think it's no individuals. Uh, I think it's corporations it's group. and groups. Yeah, though. it's a group of, you know. And they even just, they ain't even just them. It's just some niggas over there, too. Of course. But I think that's the cost of doing business. Like, when you out here and you're trying to do your personal interests and what you got at stake and what y'all got to gain, it's going to be some some motherfuckers that fall into that. But I heard it was a town in Atlanta that flooded. Um, yeah, Oscarville. That's the true story, huh? Is that real? Yeah. So That's where they put Lake Lanier. Lake Lanier. Yeah, Lake Lanier. It's real. But it's, it's a real one of them place. in every state. It's, it's, it's hundreds of them places like that around the old South. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Anytime you see some water pretty much down here, man-made reservoirs and shit like that, that's that's why all the old black neighborhoods there. You know where the rest of them at? Under all these interstates. They, mm. they put all the interstates through the black neighborhoods. So, but this the thing, though. Young nigga don't know. So what a nigga supposed to fight for anyway if a nigga don't know? You know what I'm saying? That type of shit will piss a nigga off. See, we look at this shit. Yeah, we beef with each other. But at the same time, if we knew shit like that, if a young nigga... So much passion a young nigga got on a day to day and the struggles that we face on a day to day, nigga. If we knew that shit and you could show us that shit and make us, but I'm not nah, even saying make us, but show us the truth on that shit to where we believe it, it'll be a whole nother thing. Oh, you can go hmm. to Lake Lanier and see it for yourself. But a nigga don't know what. Yeah, you know what but like when the, you know how water works in the summertime when the water get low, you can see all the old houses and shit. Y'all nigga don't give a fuck though. Y'all nigga want some money. But if you could tell a young nigga, hey, look out, it's bigger than that. You feel me? You can feed you and, you know, if you just, nigga, let me show you something. Okay. You know? Let me, this is the million dollar question, though. Even if a young nigga do get some money, what are you gonna do with it? It's the, the see, like me. Understanding the game of both sides right now, this is everything. You feel me? Because y'all can talk a certain talk, but I always listen. You feel what I'm saying? Right. I'm putting my shit in. <laughs> But I get both sides. You feel what I'm saying? So if I can get the game, I can show my young niggas on the same shit. He just showed me. You feel what I'm saying? They're going to believe it. It's going to be the truth. Hmm. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? All right. Well, this the this the short version of the long story. Ownership. The young niggas need to know the difference in between cost and value. How are we supposed to know the difference? When there's no one teaching us cost and value. Yeah, well, I'm just a saying, look, at, look at the show us this shit. The only way that this shit works is if you own something or if you got something for sale. That's the only way we gonna make it out of this bitch. Not necessarily. Yes, it is. Man, nigga need nigga need a father. You feel me? Or not that's, even yeah, not that, even a father. I that, that's a step back. You feel me? A nigga need a example. You feel me? Mm-hmm. A, a good example. Right if a nigga street nigga or not, you feel me? I'ma take what you give me and do what I want to anyway. But if we gonna make something bigger and better than what it used to be, a nigga gotta have it. But you know nigga what's fucked know. up about the hood is that we got young niggas out there who de- who don't even understand 
that the same shit you're doing in the street, it will make you successful in America. A hundred percent. Nigga, if you can sell yeah. dope, you can run a company. A hundred percent. Nigga, if you can run, if you if you can run a gang, yeah. nigga, you can you can run a company too. But a nigga don't want to hear that coming from mama. Let's keep it real though. Right. 80, 85% of the time in a black household, nigga T. John could tell a nigga that shit all day. Nigga, nigga heard, but you know what it is. And nigga trying to go outside. Nigga trying to do shit. You feel me? Yeah. But they say if that old head told that young nigga that, say, fool, you know, we run this bitch, nigga, if we really just. Young nigga gonna be like, damn, you sure all right. There you go. You feel me? A nigga don't have that. That's what we missing nowadays. That's why a nigga fucked up. And then you get the old ass clown ass niggas. Who, who, come on, man. You gonna go do the. <laughs> Bro, you got a big ass moisture our necklace on, moisture our grill. You me. You doing what we doing. Bro, get out the way. Get out the way, bro. I don't understand it. You feel what I'm saying? But we fucked up. Cause we putting this pistol on your old ass. Bro, get the fuck out of the way. Go in the house. But see, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's go in the house. Like I tell you, that story is as old as time. That's a that ain't nothing new. Yeah. But but they gotta stop. But you said a minute ago, I didn't say nothing. You said. It ain't nobody fuck. It ain't. But it is. It is. It is. It's and I'm and I start with it's it's my generation and the generation before me. It's because it's our duty. If these are this is my this is my youngster right here. Okay, so let's let's just let's let's just go in real life. I'm doing business with him with the music, right? Right. But it would be I would be remiss. Not the schooling, right? You know, and and I and I say that without no disrespect. I can't, you know, like like you would a dog or whatever. But like I would my son, you know what I mean. So if he around me, he gonna see me move like a man, do things, you know what I mean. So I, I'm supposed to inject game into him, absolutely. And like the things that you saying, what you doing right now? Because he asked you asked the question. You say how how young nigga supposed to know? Well, we can't speak for all the young niggas, but you right now, he getting it to you. He gave to you, man, you getting me something. You know what I mean? So we supposed to take it where we can get it because this is our plight. Absolutely. Yeah. But with that being said, it's not hopeless. It's never too late. Nah. Because then it like soon you know, it's it's okay to move different when we get different information. Like I said, we've been cut off from communicating with each other for the last hundred years. So it's a lot of shit that we don't know. A lot of a lot of niggas got problems with niggas and they'll, they'll never know why. Mm. But we got to be able to talk to each other as men first. It's like you said, all of us, 60, 70, 80% of all of us probably grew up without the right kind of family structure, without the right examples or the right men around. People lost them to the streets or violence or jail system or... Drugs. There's a lot of there's a lot of ways that they broke our population down and made it the way that it is. But I feel like right now it's a perfect time to get it together. Cause it's really ain't shit breaking us up no more. Crack loud good. That shit one and one. You feel me? Nigga at the house. These old niggas ain't doing shit. You feel what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it real. It's certain few cut old niggas, man, that you get nowadays, man, who really young. Know, oh, like you. At first, what you wanted to be at first? Just answer the question. Did you did you thought you to be a blogger or some shit like this? Nah, no, I, I always was a street dope boy, right? Never. Oh, comedian? No. Never. 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 <laughs> you just never wanted to sell dope. Ever. I'm from the country though. Okay. But see, you know, <laughs> most niggas automatically gon' shit and ain't gonna sell dope. Then they daddy gone. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah. but right now, right now, at this moment, right now, you got a lot of black men starting businesses. You feel me? Branching off, saying, fuck the streets, going in the trucks, going in the, you mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? You getting that right now. Mm -hmm. So if we can grasp this shit right now, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. But this is the thing. Do you ever think the street life will die? Or it'll never nah, not be niggas in die. the street? He don't never die. It's easy money. It's always. It's a record. Always. You feel me? It's a record. But a nigga ain't. Nigga it's got a, a choice. It's a record. Oh, it's a record. Yeah, it's a record. A nigga yeah. got a choice. Right. When we were young, nigga, 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 shit, daddy gone, nigga, we ain't got no choice. She in her crying. Mama crying. Absolutely. Nigga, we ain't got no choice. You going outside or what? You going to hit this lick with me or what, nigga? 
You feel me? Shit, nine times out of ten, being outside is enough to be in the streets. You feel me? Motherfucker gonna end up in the streets anyway. Come on, man. That's all I'm saying. What you feel like missing from that? What? Just from the whole equation. Like to turn this whole shit around. Man, they gotta be in that house, man. Nigga, it, it, it need. I, I, like again, like I say, my nigga, it take it take a. It, I wouldn't even say a. Uh, yeah, it gotta be a father figure. It can, I wouldn't say because a woman can only take a, a young nigga so far. No disrespect. Right. You feel me? No disrespect, but a woman can only take a young nigga so far. So it's gonna it's gonna have to be one of those ones. You feel me? Because when he showed the right young nigga, they got the whole hood. And the whole hood gonna follow suit. Mm, right. It's gonna be a domino effect. All right, well, let's do this then. If Nipsey Hussle would have never died, how many niggas would have followed his way? We don't know. But you think it would have been powerful? It could have been. It's, it, but we all, we can't get caught up on the cutters. Because think of how many niggas didn't die. Who was just as positive, who had the same impact. Who could have did? Who could have took what happened to him and ran with it? What I'm saying. Or picked up the momentum. Or picked up where he left off. That goes back to what I was saying earlier. Got these young niggas trying to be us. Gotta get out the way. Gotta get out the way. Gotta pass the ball, bro. Oh, you mean the old dudes? Yeah. Old dudes. You feel me? You got some old niggas, bro, in the way. You gotta give somebody some game. You ain't, you, you teaching your nephews all this shit you doing, right? Niece and nephew. You Absolutely. Teach Course. But that ain't that that can only go so far. Shit, all you need make is make their own decision. All you need is one. You're right. Once you get one, ain't no telling how powerful they yet that young nigga gonna be though. Mm. You feel me? But see, look around though. My whole goal with this whole studio was to be like, for him to get one, 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 for her to get one. That was my that's my whole mission. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to turn my one into eleven or twelve or thirteen or twenty. Mm. Try to put motherfuckers in position so not only can I impact my one, but he can impact one and, and so on and so forth. You got to say it on the couch, nigga. I said it on the couch. You said it on the church, nigga. You got to say it on the couch, nigga. I said it on the couch, nigga. I remember that shit. Yeah, yeah go sit on the couch. So look, what we going to do is, man, we going to be the examples that we didn't have. Yeah, we going to be them good fathers that, 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 for me. that, that we, we that was missing. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we'll, nah. we'll be the next generation of the, of the next stand-up guys. And the next and the next generation behind us will stand up even more and even more. We'll plant the seeds. You did? That's what the whole point of this platform is for. Man. And so women can watch this show and see black men speaking life into each other and positivity Purple. and sharing our stories on the platform where we ain't got to scream and yell over each other. Right, right. Absolutely. So yeah. Well said. There we go. I this need, is my contribution. I need a new port. Uh, Los, I love the show and everything. Hey, man, I was wrapping it up anyway. I was just making sure we got the kick in the political <laughs> okay. Willie Bobo. Hey, y'all keep out. I need hey. a new port. <laughs> well, you, look, this your first time stopping through the trap. Definitely don't let it be the last I time, man. Legendary. Twisted <laughs> Black. 85 South Show. <laughs> yeah. My dog. I'm ready, Love you, boy. <laughs> Let's get a flick. Man, no. Oh, hold on. Before you go, I got you something. Hey, what's up? It's your man, Carlos Miller. Look, you know the 85 South Show is back on tour with the Big Business Tour. This year, we're hitting the road and we're bringing comedy, culture, and chaos to cities all across the country. And we want you to be a part of it. We're looking for partners in every city, whether you're a local business or a national brand, this is your chance to get in on the action. Don't miss the opportunity to sponsor a show and connect with our incredible audience. If you're interested, just hit the email on the screen and let's make big business happen together. The 85 South Show Big Business Tour is coming to a city near you.